I'm child-free and bought the house of my dreams after meticulously saving, but my family is demanding I GTFO and hand it over to my sister because she has kids and student loans. Posted by you slash Colt Brilliant 4578. I, 27F, and my wife, 30F, recently closed on our dream house, and it has the family torn. Years ago, my grandparents owned the family home, but when they passed away unexpectedly with a lot of medical debt and expenses, our family had to sell their house. It was heartbreaking and sad, and I decided as a small child that one day I would buy the house back. My younger sister also shared those dreams. I met my wife when I was 18, and she was 21. Her parents owned a small rental that they allowed her to live in rent-free, just paying for the expenses. She invited me to live with her a year into our relationship, and we got married a year after that. I told her about my dreams of owning my grandparents' house, and she fully supported me. We began putting large amounts of money aside for a down payment in the hopes that the house wouldn't go on the market before we could afford it. Because we didn't pay rent and both had good jobs for our ages and the economy we lived in, we were able to save a very large sum of money. My in-laws also offered us $75,000 for the down payment, and in total, we saved about $185,000. About 20 years after my grandparents passed away, their house finally went back on the market at a massive price. The house itself is huge, with six bedrooms, a large lakefront estate, and several features, including a pool and a small guest house. We knew that this house would have a huge price tag, and we scrimped and budgeted for nine years to afford my dream house. My sister was also house shopping at this time but with a much smaller budget. She and her husband have children, student debt, and had rented for the past several years, so they were not able to save money in the same way my wife and I were. When our grandparents' house went on the market, I sent the link to my sister and said that we were finally getting our grandparents' home back in the family. She was very excited and said as much, and that was that. My wife and I moved forward, visiting with the owners and real estate agents, having it inspected, and making an offer. They accepted, and we were absolutely over the moon. Throughout this whole process, my sister kept saying how excited she was to have the house back in the family, and how nice it would be for her children to know this house and grow up in it like she and I did. Our grandparents' house was the location of every birthday, holiday, gathering, and reunion. My wife and I planned on making it that way again, which was why what my sister said didn't raise any red flags. It was weird that she phrased it that way, but it wasn't concerning. We had a barbecue at my parents' house to celebrate the final closing of our house. During the dinner, my mother-in-law offered to kennel our dogs while we were in the stages of moving to keep things easier and them safe. That was when my sister piped up. She asked why our dogs needed to be watched when the real issue was her kids. My wife asked what she meant, and she said that her kids would need more supervision than our dogs, and that she was confused as to why we'd be so busy that our dogs needed watching. I told her I was the one who was confused. I didn't know she was helping us move, and if her kids couldn't reliably be left to their own devices, then she absolutely did not need to help us pack. My sister proceeded to ask why my wife and I would be packing. I told her the obvious, we just closed on a house. For length reasons, I'll leave out a lot of the back and forth, but here's the gist of it. My sister had it in her head that we were buying the house to either A, rent it to her family, or B, transfer the title to her name and have her pay us back over time. Yes, that is literally what she was thinking, despite us never discussing anything like that once. When I told her that was not happening, my sister threw a fit. She was pissed because this was her dream too, and that it wasn't fair that only one of us could live it. She argued that since she had children, they deserved to grow up in the family home, and questioned what my wife and I even needed all that space for. My wife told her that it isn't the family home anymore. It wasn't left in a will or anything. We purchased it, and now it is our home, so we get to decide what we will do with it. My sister told my wife to shut up and that she had no say in this family discussion. I informed my sister that if she spoke to my wife that way again, we would not have any kind of contact with her anymore. She doesn't get to assume we're giving her an entire goddamn house and then throw a hissy fit when she's put in her place. We left after that. My in-laws spoke to us about the matter a few times, but all told us we were in the right and that my sister was very out of line. I assumed everyone would agree, but if they did, I wouldn't be on this thread. I got texts and voicemails from my parents saying that we were out of line threatening my sister. They told me they were disappointed in me for taking my sister's dream from her and that I don't have kids, so I can't understand her desire to provide them with a good home and childhood like she had. They said it's only fair we set up a way to give her the house and that we could afford to find something else. Even my more distant relatives have said that it was cruel of us to take that from her. I'm honestly super shocked and taken aback. I've seen stories similar to this on Reddit, entitled people thinking they should get their relatives' houses, but I never expected to live it. This feels surreal, and I hate that we're starting this new chapter on such a sour note. Edit. Wow, this blew up in such a short amount of time. Thank you for your support, and if this continues to be interesting and not blow over, I'll definitely update. Yes, this unfortunately is a real situation. In case anyone is curious, yes, the house is big and expensive, but it's severely outdated. This is why the size and features don't exactly match the price in today's housing market. It needs a lot of work, and we are also lucky to live in a state where property values haven't skyrocketed too badly. Update one one day later.
Thank you to everyone for being so supportive and offering advice. To those who suggested getting a security system in place, we are going to do that, but the house is not currently in a place where a security system can be installed. For the time being, we're looking into getting some battery-powered trail cameras as suggested by one Redditor. We don't have to worry about internet access, and they won't be in the way of renovations. We are restoring the house back to its original glory, pre-carpeted bathrooms and mismatched wallpaper. Besides fixing broken things and upgrading old appliances, we'll be having the floors redone, painting, wallpapering, installing new windows, and opening up some walls that shouldn't be there. For the next two weeks, my wife and I will be meeting with people coming out to work on the electricity, plumbing, and a few other things. We also have a consultation with a home security company. Along with cameras, we're looking to get alarms and door codes and set up an access gate around the property, one that requires either a passcode or someone in the house to let visitors in. We've already made an appointment to have the locks changed and aren't concerned about my family trying to squat there. My in-laws have allowed us to park their camper trailer on the property while work is being done, not only for peace of mind but to avoid commuting back and forth multiple times daily. For the actual update, I was hesitant to post this update since it's so soon after my original post, but I guess enough has happened for it to be useful information. The events of the barbecue took place last week, but I only got around to writing it all out yesterday. I sent a message to my parents and siblings yesterday evening asking to meet up to talk things through and try to figure out what's wrong and what exactly the hell is happening. Earlier today, my wife and I met my parents and my brother's family at his house before my sister arrived. I let them know that if they tried to interrupt or control the conversation, we would leave. I told them that I never once even suggested my sister would be allowed to rent out the house or buy it from us. I didn't know where she got the idea from, and I showed them the text strings where I first sent her the listing and every conversation where I updated her on the progress. My mom asked to see the rest of the conversations about the house, and I told her there were none. She informed me that my sister told them all that we had made an agreement that my wife and I would purchase the house and then rent it out to her family until they paid enough to buy it. According to my sister, we would live in the guest house, and they'd get the main house. She told them that we had gone back on our deal and had absolutely shattered her dreams of raising her kids in the house she grew up in. We gave our side, and it wasn't difficult at all to convince my parents that we were telling the truth. With the lack of evidence on my sister's part and absolutely no legal documentation, my parents didn't even attempt to try and back up what she had told them. My parents were very apologetic and let us know that they never would have said those things to us had they known the truth, and that they supported us 100%. My brother was supportive of us as well, but he was never one of the people harassing us over this, so his reaction is less important. Around then, my sister and her husband showed up. My brother-in-law is a doormat and will give my sister whatever she wants, so I wasn't expecting much from him. I asked her to produce any evidence to prove that I had told her we'd rent the house out to her. I told her that her lie was ill-conceived and that she'd better have a good explanation. She attempted to suggest that I had deleted the conversation, but when she couldn't produce said messages either, her story fell apart. She started crying, saying it wasn't fair that we got everything handed to us, that we didn't need a house this big, and that we were rubbing our wealth in her face. So, to my understanding, she thought she could trick everyone into bullying us into renting our house out to her? Like some kind of messed up Scooby-Doo villain? Instead of using ghosts to scare us away, she's using a fake rental agreement that she didn't even attempt to make look or sound legit. We let her know that she had a lot of apologizing to do before we'd consider having a relationship with her moving forward and that she wouldn't be welcome in our home for a long time. At the moment, our relationship with my parents is rocky at best, for obvious reasons. They let us know that they're here to support us if we need moving assistance or help with renovations, but it will take some hard thinking to decide if we're okay with that. We will not be giving anyone in my family a spare key, but my wife's parents will receive one for emergencies. The house won't be in a state to host guests for a while, so we are choosing to cross the can my family be trusted at our home bridge when we come to it. To answer some common questions I've noticed in the comments, my sister obviously has some screws loose, but my parents don't really coddle her. She's what you could consider the golden child, but honestly, most of her antics up until this point were just one-upping achievements during our childhood or seeking more attention from our parents. She's dramatic, entitled, and a little selfish, but she has never displayed this level of crazy before. No, my wife and I do not have kids and will not have them in the future. We will be meeting with an estate planner to put everything into writing. We plan on leaving the property to my sister-in-law and her kids, with my mother-in-law as the executor of our estate for the time being. My sister and her family rent a small house in town, they aren't struggling per se, they are both college educated with good jobs, but children are expensive, and with student debt and $2,000 a month in rent, they aren't exactly living it up. Also, there's a surprising amount of people mad at my wife and me for being rich. We are not wealthy. My in-laws are comfortable and generous enough to allow us to occupy their rental at no charge. They bought a new house decades ago and just didn't sell their previous one, so they allowed my wife to live there. The down payment was my wife's college fund from years ago. Her parents put money into it, but when she decided to go into a trade, they kept the money and saved it specifically for the purpose of a down payment. When we told them that the house was finally up for sale, they offered the college fund they had kept for her. 
We work good paying jobs, but we were able to save so much because we didn't have to pay $2,000 a month for housing. We did skimp and save, and we did earn it. We lived below our means and spent years foregoing any kind of luxuries to afford something we wanted. So yeah, not as drama-filled as a lot of people were expecting or hoping. I don't see this as the end of it, not at all, but for the time being, my wife and I are focusing on dealing with our new house and not my sister. She's blocked on both our phones as of this morning, and I'm not sure when I plan on unblocking her.